Oh, hey, McFly subscribers. So, here's another tying session. Um, this is not a full tying video. Um, this is just basically you coming along while I tie some flies. Um, sometimes for myself, sometimes to to sell. And this is a Pertigon. Um, Pertigon? Pertigon? I don't know. I've heard it pronounced a couple different ways, but um, basically, they're a really simple kind of Euro nymphing style fly. Um, this one specifically, I'll tie for you, and then I'm going to tie a couple others. Um, there's there's so many different styles with it. Um, this one I kind of made up. Um, it's going to be kind of like sort of case caddis in a way, but um, you know. Anyway, these, uh, these are usually with a tungsten bead on a jig hook, Euro nymphing style, obviously. And uh, today I'm using Risen's, I can bring that up there for you to see, Risen's uh, jig hooks, okay. Uh, this one's a size 12, just because I want it a little bigger. Um, and then you can, you can do, um, so I find that I don't really need it, but um, you can either put lead, so you can put some lead wraps and shove it up under underneath that, or you can put some wire and shove that up underneath that to give some extra weight um, and to stabilize the speed, but I, I don't find I need that. Um, that bead doesn't really have any issues with stabilization or not. So, so I am starting off specifically with this one, and some of these have tails. Um, this one doesn't, but some do. So you can, you can put like, uh, you know, some tail on there. Um, and excuse my kids in the background, um, with these tying sessions, this is the reason I just can't ever get a, um, a, uh, a voiceover going. So basically it's just a little simpler, but you can put a tail on this Cocktail de Leon. That's a really good, um, tailing material, but any kind of tailing material is fine. So basically I'm just putting a little tag in on the back, bringing it forward. It doesn't have to be exact. And we're just going to kind of build a taper on this quick little whip, whip finish because you're gonna go right back over that with other thread. Um, so this specific one um, uses this, it's really pretty thread. It's this kind of like, it's from Vivas and uh, Iris thread, I, I believe they call it. And they also have something called quill body that I see people use a lot for this style of fly. Um, you can do. Um, Basically different color threads underneath on the quill body give different looks. You go back there, you leave a little tag in, kind of like maybe like a cat is popping out, right? Um, bring it forward. And the thinner these bodies are, um, the faster this is going to sink, okay? So you can always build up a thicker taper if you want, but there you go. We'll finish that. Again, none of these whip finishes have to be perfect except for the last one. Um, so there, now you've got a, a body. And then you can do either another chartreuse th you know, thread for the front. Um, I like making a hot spot. You can do you know, brown or you can do whatever you want, um, black. Um, I'm gonna do orange. I kind of like the look of the orange. And then this is why, see how I'm building up underneath Excuse my kid screaming. Um, building up underneath in there, and that stabilizes that bead. That's not that's not moving. You can see. Um, all right, and then so you're just building a collar with this. And whip finishing. Now I am using a, uh, a, a different mic here. So maybe you're not picking up my kids, but they are screaming a lot. So <laughs> um, there we go. So that's done there. Um, and give me a minute. I'm gonna have to pause you and go tell my kids to be quiet. Anyway, so there, there we go. Uh, now where the beauty of this comes in is the UV resin. So this is a uh, solar res. Um, it's the bone dry formula. And I do one coat with the clear.
Oh, and by the way, these are matte black finish um, beads, which are really cool from Solarez. Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> from Risen. I really like them. Um, all right. Boy, that was weird. It did kind of a, a bubbling there. So, and then you're going to put a, uh, like, in the past, people would use, like, a Sharpie, right? And then they put a dot of, um, you know, black Sharpie, and they, they color in the spot um, to make, like, a wing case look, okay? And then put, like, a dot of uh, UV resin on top of that. But Solar Res makes this black UV resin. Now, you could put it on the very bottom, okay, or on the top. It's gonna to swim like this. I like having the wing case on the top. That's just personal preference. And just a dot of black. I like to turn it upside down so it doesn't seem to wanna to run, because it will. It'll kinda of run around. So you can really, you can shoot it, you know, harden it there while it's still on top. And then it gives you that, that wing case. Um, that way it doesn't run all the way around to the back. And then you got that collar right there. You got the wing case. You got a really, I mean, this one specifically, it's a really shiny body. Um, you know, this, this uh, I'm gonna be using for, I don't really like the way this taper turned out. Sorry guys, usually I do a little better. Um, this is kind of more, um, this one's on the, the bottom with like a red top, but you can see the taper is a little better on that one. Um, but that's that's basically the fly. So I'm going to show you a couple other different versions here. These size 14 here, the Risen Barbless Jig Hooks. These are 92.30. And by the way, well, I'm, and I'm going to put a bead on it. By the way, I'm going to um, I, I get a discount with them, uh, which I'm able to share with you guys. So it really makes these such a good deal for really good quality hooks. These are barbless, um, specifically their barbless ones are some of my favorite. Got the wrong bead there. You use a three and a half millimeter, kind of like a big bead. You can go a little smaller and go a little bigger probably. Um, it'll still fit, but um, you know, good size bead will help get it down a little better. Um, again, you could add lead wraps if you wanted. You don't have to. There we go. All right, so this one I am going to put a tail. You can see I got quite a few of the fibers, probably a dozen or so. Um, these cocktail own fibers are rather thin. And what am I doing? I'm going to start my thread, don't I? <laughs> so this is more of a bright red thread. Um, Vivas, it's Vivas Tenot. Vivas makes a couple different red colors. This is one of the brighter ones. It's like a hot red. All right, so I'm gonna, to be able to build the taper and spin that thread, what I'm doing is I'm spinning it counterclockwise and that's gonna flatten up the thread. It's, you know, being ten, the Tenot, it's a, it's a flat thread. You can see how that flattens down um, at that point, hopefully. I think I need to get you guys uh, focused better. All right, now you're focused. By the way, this new camera is pretty cool. I'm really liking it. So I've got Peacock Quill here, okay? And this gives a really nice natural looking segment. However, you can also color Peacock Quill with a Sharpie, you just take a Sharpie, okay? And um, put it on some kind of piece of plastic or whatever, or a piece of paper, that's fine. And um, you just, you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm just running, basically, sandwiching that quill between the Sharpie tip and the little piece of cellophane that I've got here. And kind of made made it red. Now they, they also make th these, these are called magic quills. They work really well too. 
um, and that's not natural. So um, it's a you know synthetic kind of imitator. Now with quills, you really want to make sure that this is a really nice even taper. Okay. build up that head, kind of stabilize that bead with the thread. Okay, I'm going to build a little more taper here. Come down about halfway and then back up. It's a small taper. And we're gonna grab the end with some pliers here, hackle pliers, and just make some nice touching wraps. My lights are in the way, of course. get this as even as possible so this creates like a really nice like rib look right we'll go ahead and capture it you don't need to come all the way up because we're going to build a hot spot almost all these really benefit from a hot spot when that for some reason that Peacock quill kind of came out super dark. There's not a whole lot of gradation there. Usually it's a little more gradated. Some of these turn out a little better than others. There we go. Super simple. Now, the, like any of these Euronymphing flies, they're, they're just simple, they're quick to tie. Um, not a whole lot of difficulty in them. And they are really effective. I mean, you don't even have to be your own thing to get this to work really well. Now, see, I'm getting a little red on my UV resin here. I don't want that really that much. So when you do that with the, with the Sharpie, you just let it sit and dry a little longer. Um, then because it's it's you don't want to color up your UV resin all right so now I got a hit with the clear put this one on the back and you can see what I mean so you can either put it on the back or the 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 top go sorry guys this one didn't turn out so hot I'm gonna build a little more of that kind of taper with the resin There we go. It's got the well. That one's one of my least favorite ones. Sorry, guys. Let's try one more here. Let's try it with the um, magic quill. Let's do the exact same thing. We'll do a red underbody. Maybe we'll do a different hot spot on the front. Maybe a chartreuse hot spot.
Here, in this one, I'll put some lead so you can see what I mean. There's seven wraps of lead. I'll just break it off. And then I usually put a dab of, this is how I put on lead on these. Got to make sure it's angled the right way. See how if it's there, it's not going to go over that. Um, doesn't really line up properly, but if I see how that kind of really locks in. Okay, so it's got to go the right direction. A little dab of super glue, and then quickly just push that right up into it. And that stabilizes the bead, adds a little more weight. You can do that. Alright, and then a little over the lead, come down a little bit, let's put in a little bit more of the tail. Again, I'm just kind of playing with uh, some of these materials here guys, so not necessarily creating new patterns, um, actually I might be, <laughs> um, just, uh, you know, I'm not going off of a specific pattern necessarily, um, just kind of playing with it. Alright, so there's, there's a tail, come up, partially back down. And then these, they're just like kind of like little stickers. And you can see this, it's like a long sticker. One side has like a gradated side to it, so it makes it look like a quill. And the other side's hollow. So whatever you put underneath it, it's going to give that. So towards the tip here, it's really fine. I'm just going to cut off a lot of that. And you want to go sticker side, the, the out, like towards you, um, and the smooth side against the fly because when it comes in, I, I almost forgot that, but I've done that before. So, all right, so I was halfway. I'm going to go back up to tie that in. I'm going to flatten out my thread. Come back down. Try to get a really nice taper. Okay, and then I'm going to start a different color here. I'll do chartreuse. It'll be interesting. Oh, yeah, this is really tight. All right, there we go. Then we can just start wrapping the quill up, touching wraps. You can see how that makes like a really nice gradation. That's really what the <laughs> what that other quill is supposed to look like. I don't know what happened there. Um, didn't turn out all that nice. There we go. Now, if you've got a bigger fly, you could probably use that, save that, and go with, um, you know, cool up late, maybe a, a larger fly. There we go. So let's build a little collar on there. And I'm doing quick little whip finishes, guys. These aren't really heavy because we're coating this in UV resin. So this doesn't have to be um perfect right
And some people really do like doing it on the back because it covers up that little notch that you get on the on it. Um, and that's fine. I mean, you can do that. Um, it's just going to look like the notes swimming upside down. I'm not sure how much it really matters. I do it how you want it. I'm just a little weird that way, I guess. All right. There we go. That's a good one. All right, guys. Well, there's the pert again. Um, so many different variations. Obviously, with that quill, um, you can use almost um, with the magic quill here. Um, that stuff. You, I mean, you could do pretty much any combination of colors here. Um, tie it however you want. Um, and do a little more natural have like a brown under you know underneath or white or whatever um you even have to add a tail you can do different types of tails that's the thing with these they're just really versatile tie it however you want um and they get down quick they did get down deep um it's similar actually there's another fly i tied um that was similar to this a while back and i called it the only nymph you ever need to learn to tie um and this this is right alongside with that i mean they're basically the same idea um just get a jig hook like this put a slotted tungsten bead you can get them kind of anywhere but i really like them from risen just because of the price they're really reasonable um you get 25 of them in a bag and uh they i, I want to i don't even remember the price i think they're like four dollars or something like that but i just know that they are some of the best prices for good quality hooks and these things you can see they're pretty I mean, I'm not bending this hook. It's it's moving in the vise. Hold on, and this is a good vise too. It's a uh, Renzetti, so um, it's just impossible. Not impossible. You're gonna bend it if you really, you know, you could. Um, but just like any other hook, but these are really good quality. I mean, I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, and it's not bending at all. You know, they're just they're good quality hooks, really really high quality, and. Um, for a good price and uh, their beads I really love their beads especially their slotted tungsten they have quite a few different kinds um, you guys saw the um, these are kind of new and they're pretty cool they're uh, matte black but they also have you know the tungsten um, uh, shiny uh, black nickel kind of and uh, they're they're just they're really good quality beads um, I've gotten beads from other places um, I found them about the same price as theirs um, which is really good price, uh, but generally those ones that I've found at other companies that are about the same price tend to have a whole bunch that have problems. They have maybe, um, you know, the the slot is kind of not on center or the hole is, is too big or too small. They're not all exact. Some of them aren't round. I mean, it just becomes a, a pain in the butt to pick, and through, uh, pick through them, and I haven't really had any from Risen that have had issues. They've all been good quality, so... Uh, great hooks um, and and good beads. So uh, again, both of them very good price. It's hard to find tungsten at a good price. Um, right now, I mean, you're gonna pay a lot of money almost anywhere except for there. So go check them out. And uh, yeah, you can get any color combination, throw, you know, kind of really anything that's gonna create a rib. Um, usually, sorry guys, this didn't turn out very well, but usually these um, natural, um, quills turn out really good. Another thing you could do is see the the stem here from the Coq de Leon. There's a there's like a, a lighter and darker edge to it. Um, you could use that, but you'll have to soak it in warm water for a while uh, beforehand. You could use that. Um, I see people using uh, flashaboo, okay, um, and create like a rib. Um, anything that's going to create a rib is really going to um, work for this. Um, with, or without a rib. I mean, I see people do just, you know, different colors of thread um, and just, you know, get creative with it. Have fun. Um, you don't even have to put the black on there. I like it. I think it's pretty cool. And this stuff is really neat, uh, especially if you're trying to create a black head on the fly, you could use this, the blown dry black. Um, but I really like for these flies, this bone dry, um, it, uh, the, the clear um, 
creates a nice, easy, uh, with the paintbrush, you can really kind of create these quick and easy. Um, I really like it. So go ahead and give some of these a, a try. You'll like them. Um, I'm going to fish some bluegill with this one and, and these too. Um, I think that that would be really cool for bluegill, really shiny. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for it. Um, around here, that's about all I, I can fish for right now. It's the summer. It's really hot. Um, trout season will come back soon, but you know, got a little bit of time, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that video, um, on my, uh, uh new camera here. So <clears throat> this is the first time I'm filming with this camera. We'll see how, how it turns out. I don't know. You guys tell me if you think, uh, you can tell the difference with the 4k or not. Hopefully I got the settings right. Um, also tell me how you like the sound. I'm, I'm, I've got a, uh, a new mic can hear that, I'm sure. So let me know if the sound sounds better, if it's less um, tinny, like uh, some of my other videos. And yeah, I will see you guys on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.